So if you have a timeline, actually let's get a music track from somewhere. Um, in the tags, music track, okay. Seems to be grouped. Okay, so uh, just move that music channel in the timeline. And stretch it out, and then it will apply to the timeline while the timeline is playing. Um, oh. It's so far away. Okay, and if we look, look kind of to the angle like that, we can drag it out. There we go. So, um, ah, that's a bit like. Interesting. I like some weird time signature. Cool. So let's say uh, we have a bit of this bit. <laughs> so. interesting uh, mix of styles so say um, you had this as an intro and then you wanted to loop this bit over and over um, you can do that uh, uh, in a couple of ways so the let's get a chip drag that down open that up um, so one way would be to have two copies of this timeline and you'd probably delete a load of the stuff but for now we'll just um, drag the trim end which is there so basically it's it behaves as if that's all that's in the track uh, you can also set the trim start and end by holding L1 and hovering over this bit and if you click R3 which is the right stick click that in uh, then you set the, the end and if you click L3 while holding L1 then it sets that the trim start so let's put that there um, so we've got the intro bit and now we want to make the looping bit so we'll just put that like that uh, that'll do and put that like that So then um, we have a selector. Now a selector has multiple channels and only one of these channels will send a signal and we can set which channel is the active uh, channel in different ways. So when the first, first will power, it by default it starts on channel A. Um, so we'll power this using channel A. Um, and then we'll click on there. Uh, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. So um, when the the scene starts, it'll be playing this um, this part here. Oh. oh, yeah. So it'll play that to the end, and then. Uh, we can use this on end trigger, which triggers when that timeline ends, to set the um, active time active channel by sending a signal into B. So then the B 
channel we will be active and sending uh, output. So we'll use that output to power the next one. And we want that to loop. So now if we start again, I'll just, in the interest of time, I'll make that shorter. Four bars, okay. So it starts on A and the intro is playing. Then it changes to B and now the loop is playing. If we skip through it. So you actually need this to be halfway through that. Which is pretty finicky, there we go. So it gets to the end. So it just loops and loops and loops. Um, so this is one way of doing it. Um, there is another way, so we will power that off. We can do it just using the timeline itself. So uh, we'll make those, but uh, we'll actually leave that in the same starting point. So at this point here, we want to loop back to this point here. Um, you can do that using a time a, a keyframe. Uh, if you stamp it in the world rather than in the timeline, because that will kind of snap the um, playhead to the where the keyframe is, uh, we want to hold L1 and use X to move this around, and we'll move that to where we want to loop to, where we want to set the um, playhead to. Um, and remember to hold L1, otherwise it won't work. Um, and now we move that to the right position. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to remember to power it. So uh, I think, is it powered or not? Let's have a look. It is powered, okay. So make sure it's powered and also make sure it has keep changes because if it doesn't have keep changes, then the playhead will snap to there, but then when it goes past this keyframe, it will snap back again because of how keyframes uh, work. So, um, yeah, let's just see how that works. That plays fine, let's get through a bit. And it works just as before. So um, that's a useful way of doing it. You can also um, hook that up to some logic or other. I'm just going to move this ahead over here so that uh, we can just play with it easier. So if you had some, some piece of logic, such as a switch that powers that keyframe, then while that keyframe isn't powered, then it will sail right past. When it is powered, it will loop. So we play it and go through. It's powered, so it loops round. If we unpower it, it goes right past. And once it's past there, it won't ever get to that keyframe again. So even if you turn it on, nothing will happen. So that's quite a useful way of um, transitioning to a, the next part of the song when like you reach a certain area of the game something like that yeah the warning though if you do that it'll mess up so this playhead will go to a different position so it didn't go to the start of this bar because um, the playhead is actually like a number between 0 and 1 um, which means you can set it with a number between 0 and 1, which is pretty cool. But it means if you change the length of the whole thing, then zero, uh, like... So, um, this set it to halfway through, which is 0 0.5. If I put this to 10, now 0 0.5 is on bar 5 instead of bar 4. So if I play time, it will snap to there 
produce them what you want. So after you set that, if you have to change this, then you have to reset these. Um, or if you can help it, just leave it whatever size. So if you if you had set it when it was out like that, oh, oh, and you can't if it's if the keyframe is inside the timeline, the playhead will snap to the keyframe position and won't let you set it somewhere else. So let's say you did that, and then put that there. That loops loops as expected. Um, but if say you had other stuff but then you wanted to just tidy up and do that just don't do that and just leave bits hanging off the end that's what I did in uh, my game uh, and it works absolutely fine it just has this empty space but it doesn't uh, make any have any effect whatsoever and it l lets the keyframes just keep working properly mm -hmm.